Alrighty guys, hi, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day today. As always, if you're new here, returning, and you haven't yet already, be sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a big thumbs up if you like it. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them down in the comment section. So today is going to be a quick overview of my makeup collection. It probably is going to be a little bit longer of a video. Um, sorry for any super disrupted clips. I'm, you know, gonna have to figure it out as we go along and I appreciate you guys having patience with me. With that being said, before we get into everything, I do want to say I'm not bragging about the quality or the quantity of makeup that I have. I have been working hard for several years to be able to purchase these products uh, and curating my collection has taken four years. Some of these products are probably expired, but they don't smell and they work just fine. So this will probably be the only time you see my face in this video. I am not planning on going into anything super in depth. If you guys see any area of my collection that you want me to swatch or talk about more in depth on, just leave it down in the comment section and I will be happy to film that for you. But without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get on into it. Thank you. All right, so here we are at the first drawer to the left um, of my vanity, and I will show an overall of the top of my vanity at the end. But this is the first drawer. This is where I have all my powders, my bronzers, blushes, and highlights. So I'm just going to show all of the products that I have, and I'm not going to do any swatching or anything. I'm just going to show the products and open the products. Um, if deemed necessary. So we'll start off with this back corner. I'm going to take a few out so we can get to everything and then we'll talk about them. So over in this corner I have a couple of larger face palettes. So I have the Jouer, um, what is this one? The Boutique D'Amour blush palette. This is what it looks like. I purchased this off of a recommendation from Smoky Glow, Hannah. You can obviously tell which shade that I use most often, but I do enjoy this palette. And in this video, you're going to realize how much I watch YouTube because I get a lot of my palettes from recommendations. I purchased this uh, Cover FX palette. I can't remember if somebody had recommended it or if it just looked like it would suit my skin tone. Although these colors do work for my fair skin, I don't find myself really reaching for this. Um, I haven't had it for too, too long, maybe six months. I think I need to move where I have this at in my collection to be sure to utilize it more. I have the smoke not the smoke, the Shade and Light palette by Kat Von D. This was a cult favorite. Almost every beauty guru talks about this palette. Um, I purchased it just because of everybody recommending it. You can see that I've used it a little bit. Again, it's not one that I typically use anymore. I just have found myself not reaching so much for face palettes anymore. But I still keep it despite that she's problematic. Um, the product itself, when I do use it, does what it's supposed to and is pretty decent. Another product that I pulled out is this Marc Jacobs um, bronzer uh, or contour. I think most people use this for bronzer. Sorry if you can see me in the reflection. This... I purchased because of Hannah from Smoky Glow reflect, um, recommending this. I find that her the product she likes, I typically like. I will say though with this product, if you go in, if you're as fair as me, if you go in heavy handed, it will look muddy. So I do struggle sometimes if I'm in a rush, end up having a harsh line. That's more my fault than the product's fault. I purchased this Kevin Aquan duo. He is really known for his um, 
contour shades for fair skin. This one ends up being a little bit heavy for me, so I can only use it if I have a tan, which wasn't much this year. I have this little Natasha Denona Bronze and Glow palette. I really like the bronzer shade in here. It's just such a small pan size that I don't use it very often. I got this in an Ipsy bag and I have not yet used it. I at least try the products before I either declutter them, donate them, or throw them away. I have the Cult Favorite, the Butter Bronzer by Finish Physicians Formula. I'm pretty sure this is uh, the light shade. It, it is. I have two smaller face palettes here. I have this Hourglass ambient light one and I have not used it. I've had this for like six months and it's, I've had this longer than that. I got this over Christmas. Um, I just haven't used it. I love Hourglass products and I asked for this from my husband based off of um, Raw Beauty Christie's wonderful reviews of that product. And I have yet to use it. I think I've used it once and I didn't give it a fair shot. This is the NARS holiday last year, the orgasm infatuation. I think they maybe still sell this. Maybe it's just when it launched last year. All of these shades work wonderfully for me. This is a really easy go-to travel palette for face for me. I don't have very many um setting powders one that i have is laura mercier in the smaller size although i have some things in my collection that are expensive i do not use finishing powder especially loose powder like this often enough to substantiate purchasing her powder in my opinion i don't like it it's not my favorite the fenty beauty is my favorite and a good Follow up to that is the Fit Me, the Maybelline Fit Me. I only have the uh, Fair Light. I, I haven't tried their translucent. And in Fenty Beauty, this is the Butter Shade. This is a great finishing loose powder. For pressed powders, again, the Maybelline Fit Me. And uh, obviously, I need a new one. This recently broke is the Rimmel Stay Matte, which is a translucent. In this section here are all of my bronzers. Um, I have got the Huda Beauty. This is her cream one in Fair. I've only used this a handful of times. I purchased these cream products thinking it would be easier and quicker, but it, I find myself having to learn. There's a learning curve. This is the Fenty Beauty Cream. I've used these a couple of times. I'm still trying to figure out how to work them um, or make them look nice on my skin. This is my everyday bronzer. This is the Fenty Beauty in the shade Into Sun. I purchased the Shady Biz shade in the mini size because Raw Beauty Christy has a very similar skin tone to me and undertone and this shade looks really good on her so I purchased it for that reason. I don't like a harsh contour or one that I need to work on blending so it does look really well but it takes me time. I have some little miniature sizes. I have the Hula. I don't know if I've even tried this one yet. I have the Tarte one in Park F Princess. I haven't tried that one either. I did try this one and it does work for my skin tone. I don't use it just because it's in this little weird component. This is something I have gotten in Ipsy. Almost all of the small sizes except for this Fenty one I got in an Ipsy bag. I got the Matchstick. For, for from Fenty, I really enjoy Fenty products, and this looks like it's straight up gold. So I have not used this. I typically 
am only doing my makeup because I'm leaving the house, I'm going to work, or I'm filming a video. And I think I'm going to use some of these products I don't use regularly in a video just to see how it turns out. This is my first ever bronzer I purchased. And I purchased uh, this off of recommendation from Soph um, Does Nails. And this was, I mean, this was like three years ago, I think. This is the Makeup, Makeup Forever Pro Bronze Fusion. I more or less keep this for sentimental reasons. I don't use this blush or bronzer anymore. It's too glittery. This is a highlight, obviously, in the wrong section, which was from a Ipsy box. We'll show that later. I have a cult favorite Bahama Mama bronzer. This is way too deep for me. Um, I Obviously, I used it once upon a time, but it is a little bit way too, it is just way too dark. I don't know why I still have it. And then this is a Gigi Gorgeous one, uh, bronzer. This actually is really nice. I got this in an Ipsy bag. So here's some of my blushes. I have the Tarte You'll see which one. This one is it. This is my everyday blush. This is very similar to the shade in the Jouer palette. Um, these don't look too peachy. Like I don't like really rosy cheeks. I just like it to look like a natural flush. This is the perfect shade for me. This is in the shade Party by Tarte. I recently, and when I say recent, it's been a few months. I haven't bought any makeup in like at least five months. That's not true. I bought all the e.l.f. eyeshadow, small eyeshadows recently, but aside from that, I haven't purchased anything. I bought this a while back, trying to get a, another um, blush that I like for every day. This is a little too corally for me. This is in Quirky. I got a Sephora one. I think this was one that I was gifted and this is sweet on you I don't know why if this opens this is way too pink and there's shimmer in it I'm not a huge fan of some shimmer blush the only shimmer blush I have been okay with that looks really nice on my skin tone is the orgasm shade in that NARS palette here is a mini NARS in Deep Throat. This isn't too bad. I find most NARS blushes have some kind of reflux in them. And that one's not super bad, but I don't... I prefer a matte one. This obviously came in an Ipsy bag. Does it say it's from the brand Skinny Dip? Unless that is the shade. This is right up my alley. It's a good non-shimmery shade this one is from pixie by petra i got this based off of another recommendation i don't know who it was though uh this pulls a little dark on me it almost looks like a contour but i do like it if i use it light handed this was one of the first ever blushes i got I do not use this anymore, but I keep it for a sentimental reason. I think it falls out even. This was one from the Benefit. This was one I got in an Ipsy. I've used it. I don't remember this product though. You can tell I have my go-tos and I kind of stick to those on a daily basis. Now we're getting into some of my highlight. I do not have a ridiculous highlight selection because I don't wear highlight every day. I typically only wear highlight for events or filming. Uh, and most of my highlights are actually eyeshadows. So I'm, this is an eyeshadow, but because I'm fair enough, um, I will pull any eyeshadow that I won't use or that is easily dupable in my collection. So there is this one which I have used this works really well for a highlight for me it's a nice um, light champagne color this is from the brand the estate and this is an a light like white gold 
I think I've only used this once or twice. I'm not sure how I feel it. Feel about it. Um, here we go. Wet and Wild. This is in the shade Blossom Glow. I, you can tell this is one that I use very often. It works really well for my skin tone. These were both eyeshadows that are light enough to be used as um, highlights for me. I've used both of those. They work well. This is a highlight from Jouer. Ouch. I That was hard to open. I really like this shade. I don't know if it's going to totally come off on camera. This might be one that I swatch for you guys. Look at that shift. It is so pretty, but it's too loud for me. Because I don't wear highlight all the time, it's hard for me to um, wear a highlight like this, although it's beautiful. This might be a highlight that would be better off as a blood, uh, eyeshadow topper. I should probably move that and try it that way. Then I have this Natasha Denona Diamond Glow which is a blush and a highlight. This highlight is pure glitter, so I do not wear it. But it was uh, not super expensive, but expensive enough to where I'm not going to um, throw it away and I haven't found somebody to give it to. This is another single eyeshadow that I will use as a highlight. You can tell I kind of stick to um, Champagne-y, pink shift ones. Those look the best and most natural on my skin. I broke down and bought a Becca miniature size. This was, what shade was this in? An opal. And this is a nice one too. I just don't wear it very often. I have these. I have a Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Drops. I've never tried to use these. I went through a declutter when I moved thinking I would use some of these products and kept them. And I haven't. <laughs> I tried this once. Um, it's uh, cream. I thought using cream products would be easier than what it has turned out to be for me. So that is all that's in that drawer. And then over here is my... Um, oops, this drawer has, sorry for the wiggles, this has all of my ice, I, I mean it's not my eyeshadow, it's got my primers, my eyeliner pencils, and my different mascaras. So for primer, I have... The Kaja um, Blurred Drop. I actually really enjoy this primer. It's very much like a moisturizer. The Milk Hydro Grip. This is wonderful if you're wanting your makeup to last. The Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas. I love this stuff. I don't know if this technically should be in this drawer or a different drawer, but the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Um, I've had this for about five months, five, six months. This was the last purchase I had from Sephora. And I'm still just now trying to get to using it and seeing how it works. I have the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. This used to be a cult favorite. I really enjoy it. Um, I'm obviously, I'm scraping the barrel. I've started to use this sparingly. I have the uh, miniature Tatcha Silk Canvas Putty. I don't find that I like this as much as I like this, which I have, I'm very bad. I have a habit of using lids that are on my vanity as a mixing, <laughs> mixing pot. Um, however, whenever I purchased this like a year ago, I lived in Florida and the humidity made the product adhere to the lid and I don't want to lose any of it. So I just am careful with it. This is the Timeless Smooth Primer. This will fill any pore or any piercing hole perfectly. And I got this recommendation from, 
what is her name? Her name's Nicole. I just can't remember her last name. I will try to link all of these channels down in my description bar. She's an affiliate of Sephora and she is one of the first YouTubers who kind of called out Morphe for being a private label company a few years ago. I have a ton of uh, primer samples. This is another thing that Ipsy likes to overload you with as well as Sephora for your free whenever you get to pick like two free samples. I have not tried any of these that are back here. I've got this whole tin and I have some Versali drops too in here. I've used those. Those are okay. But those are, I don't have anything, any recommendations or anything. I haven't used those. And here I have all of my eyeliners, which is a ridiculous amount. That is also because Ipsy <laughs> likes to send eyeliner. It's something that most people wear and it's universal. So I have, and these actually all work. I recently went through all of this stuff when I moved. So this one's from Tarte. This is a felt tip if I remember correctly. I'm not a fan of this one. It is like almost hurtful <laughs> to my eyelids, but I keep it just in case. I have a Stella one. This is actually a really nice one. That's a brush tip if I remember correctly. I have a lot of just random, I don't wanna say random, indie brand. I have a lot of indie brand ones that were in Ipsy. I mean, eyeliner pencils to me are eyeliner pencils. The only difference it is to me is if it's liquidy, if it stays, if it bleeds. Uh, and a lot of these I haven't tried. Like this Ico one, I haven't tried. I haven't tried this Stowaway, I think. No, I thought that was one in a brown color and that's why I kept it. Here's another Ico one. Here's another Sila one. This is an Urban Decay 24 hour black for my waterline. The Marc Jacobs in black for my waterline, which I don't hardly ever put eyeliner in my waterline anymore. A white. I typically put white or um, you'll see in my next drawer, it's a multi-use pencil or a nude color in my bottom waterline if I'm going to wear one. Here's another eyeliner pen, which I haven't even, I haven't used that yet. So there's bunches of them. Um, the main two that I do use on a typical basis are these two, the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner and the Fenty Beauty Fly Liner. You guys have heard me talk about these. These are the Urban Decay Heavy Metals eyeliners. I don't always use these as eyeliners, <laughs> as you guys have seen in my get readies with me. If I want to be super glittery and like out there, I will use these as toppers. But I do use them as eyeliner as well from time to time. Over here are my different, I found my lash curler. I don't remember where it was. But in here, there's my other one. I guess I didn't put it in here. In here I have my, well, there's my custard <laughs> shade. I have my, geez, I got distracted by that, didn't I? My eyeshadow primers. I have an Urban Decay one, the original primer potion. I'm not sure where it went. It might have fallen on the floor, to be honest. But that's um, where I keep these, along with all of my eyeshadows not eyeshadows this is mascara so you guys have heard me talk about time and time again my struggle with mascara this is the one that I am really enjoying right now which is nice because it's not a super expensive mascara I have found if I curl my lashes I do really like this um, it cosmetics lash blowout but I have, like you can see all the ones in here. I've got Too Faced, I have Benefit, I have Fenty Beauty, Anastasia.
This is another Urban Decay one, a Sephora one. I do have false lashes back here and glue. I'm not good at them, so I don't typically do those. This is the Anastasia Black Potted Eyeliner. This is my preferred method of eyeliner. Um, if I have the time, this is what I'll use if I'm going to wing out my eyeliner. Otherwise, I will use a, one of the other ones just to line. Here are my... Sorry, you can see my foot. Here is my lipstick drawer. So, in here I have lipsticks, a few lip glosses. And then over here are my like lip treatments and lip glosses only. So all of these are my Fenty Beauties lip gloss that I have in that came in this tin last year, last Christmas. I have bought in two full sizes. This is my Patrick Ta. This is a Jouer sample. I don't like this one. I have the Bite Beauty, the Agave in a pot in a lipstick form. I have the NARS. This is a concealer. It shows how much I wear concealer. This is the NARS Potted Concealer in Vanilla. I will put that somewhere else. And the Fresh Sugar um, Hydrating Lip Balm in Caramel. I really like this. I don't know if it does that great of a job, but I like to put it on. So for lipsticks, I don't wear lipsticks or uh, liquid lipsticks or I really don't wear any products on my lip other than lip gloss. So it's kind of outrageous that I have the amount that I do. So most of these colors are going to be like this, all the same because this was the, the two Fenty ones are the only ones that I have actually gone out of my way and purchased. The rest of these, um, I've either been gifted or they came in a bag or a sample of some kind. That's why they are all very neutral or very red. Uh, if you guys are interested, like I said earlier, in any swatches of this stuff, you can let me know. But I bought this thinking it was going to be more of a nude. This is a little too dark for me. I will wear it with um, a very light lip gloss over it. And then this is uh, one of her cult favorite, her cult following shades and uncuffed. I've worn it. I, I mean, it's a good nude. That's about all I can say. So we are going to venture over to the right side of my vanity. All right, so now we're over to the right side. I am not gonna go through this first drawer. This is all um, skincare and um, like moisturizers. If you guys are interested in a video like that, I can do that, but I'm for time's sake, I'm not gonna do it today. So we're gonna start off with my second drawer. Sorry for the cord here. I will try to get it out of the way. There we go. So this is my foundation drawer. And as you can see, I have more foundation than any one person would need. I have been on a foundation journey the last like year and a half. And I have pretty much regularly used almost all of these at some point or another. Um, this is what I have so far. If you guys want a in-depth video about each of my foundations and which ones work for me and why they work for me and which ones don't and why they don't let me know I can do a breakdown video of all of my foundations but this is all that I have I, it's layered both two layers deep on each side it's slightly embarrassing um, but the two that work best for me are the Estee Lauder Double Wear and the Fenty Beauty in the shade, um, which one is this? Is the shade on here? I will have to check what shade this is. It's either the lightest or the second to lightest. I am fairly fair skinned. Um, some of these, as you can tell looking at the bottles, they are 
not the right skin tone for me. So that is my foundations. This is probably the drawer most people want to see. This is my eyeshadow palette drawer and we're not going to do any swatches. I am going to walk through all the palettes I have and if you guys want swatches or comparisons or anything like that, just let me know down in the comment section. So I have quite a few Huda Beauty palettes. I, Although she's problematic, I really actually enjoy her formula. So I have the pastels and the lilac, which I guess I can open these and you guys can see the ones that are what they look like on the inside. This is what the palette looks like. Oops. I'm going to try not to bump you guys every time. This is the Light Nude by Huda. And here is the Nude Medium. I bought the Nude Medium because the Nude Light really didn't give me as much dimension as I wanted. But I like, I enjoy both of those. I, this was my last purchase. I bought all of the, I don't think all, I think I missed one because I double purchased this, this one, these two are the same. I double purchased it, not paying attention. Um, but I have all of these e.l.f. little minis, a lot of creators, mainly um, Taylor, Taylor Wynn stated in some of the ones, some of her eye looks she had used these and that they were good dupes of the Natasha Denona minis, which I have a lot of them. They're right here. I believe she's come out with a couple since I haven't been purchasing any makeup recently. So this is the minis of the Natasha Denona ones that I have. I really like Natasha Denona's formula. I find her formula easy to blend. I have had some issues with the larger palettes, which I'll show you which two I have in a minute. Well, I have more. Yeah, we'll get there. I have all of the Kaja Bento, bo Bento boxes. I have talked about these. I s purchased the first two because of Hannah from Smoky Glow. And then I also became obsessed like she is and I have purchased every single one unless they've come out with some recently, which they very well could have. I have not been keeping up with makeup for the past um, few months. I just haven't, you know, I have a pretty decent collection and I've come to the point where not necessarily that I need to minimize my collection, but that I probably should stop purchasing makeup until I get through some of the makeup I already have. So these are wonderful eye toppers and their mattes are that magnificent to work with. I love the mattes and these little trios. I believe maybe they've come out with some all matte ones now that I'm thinking about it, but I I haven't purchased any makeup. I have one caviar stick, not caviar, is that what this was called? Yeah, caviar stick from Laura Mercier in a very um, common shade. It's just like a pink rose gold shade. I purchased these to try the Zueva brand. I heard a lot of different creators really raving on this brand. So I bought the super mini size of a few of their palettes. And I have only used some of these. I think I've used each one of these palettes once. So I don't really have a solid opinion on them. They weren't bad. I know that, but as far as like where I would rank them, I don't have any idea at this point. <laughs> Over here, well, let's do these palettes to make some room to get to those. So I have the Huda Beauty 
Mercury Retrograde palette. I recently showed you guys this palette on a live when I was getting ready. I thoroughly enjoy this palette. My only complaint is these shades do not swatch what they look like. That's my only complaint with this palette, but the shades otherwise, they are wonderful. This has become one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes to, to own. This is the Lunar Beauty by Manny MUA, Strawberry Dream. Aside from the two colors you guys are probably aware I don't use, um, I love this palette. Uh, this is the palette I have been gravitating for for any berry or pink toned looks. This is the palette. These shimmer shades are beautiful. Again, if you guys want any swatch videos of my eyeshadows or anything, let me know. I don't mind filming that, but for time's sake, I can't swatch everything. I have the Huda Desert Dusk palette. I really prefer warm toned shadows. I think they complement my eye color really well. This is also another really nice quality palette. The shimmers in here, Huda's shimmers are really good to work with. I find them easy to blend. I've talked about this palette recently. I really like Soph and I couldn't find her collab with Revolution until recently when I found it in TJ Maxx. I've only used this a couple of times, but I have really enjoyed it. It, you can make almost any kind of look with this color scheme. The next palette, which was kind of underrated in my opinion, was the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. You can tell this shade broke shortly after I got it, but aside from that, I have gotten a good bit of use out of this palette. You can, although it doesn't appear you could get a lot of looks out of it. You really can. I really, really like this palette. I don't use it as much as I should. But that is that palette. Over here are my Anastasia palettes and um, a Too Faced palette. So we'll start. I'll just push them forward. I have the Sweet Peach palette by Too Faced. I bought this because of Hannah Smoky Glow. Um... She likes pink purple tones. I prefer pink and orangey red over purple, but I really liked the look she could get out of this palette, so I purchased it. And I can be honest with you, the quality is fine. I just am not, I don't jive with this palette. I keep it in hopes of maybe being able to reach more into my creative side, but I haven't had the time, so it's kind of just that in my collection for about two years now. Anastasia is one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas. So I have quite a few of her palettes. This is the Soft Glam. I'm sure most of you guys who are watching this have seen these palettes before. I got the Carly Bible palette. I know this palette kind of got some flack. I really like the palette though. Is it... Do I find myself needing to pull from other palettes? I do, but I actually don't mind that with this palette. I like the shimmers in here enough to where I'm okay with gravitating for another palette for some mattes. But I really like this palette. I have the Riviera palette. This is about the only palette I own with any large pops of color other than the Strawberry Dream palette. I don't use this palette often, but I do like it. The Sultry palette. I This is one of my favorite palettes. I don't use it as much as I should. And the one everyone has is the Modern Renaissance. The one that started it all, so to speak. These are the colors I started makeup, like being able to do eyeshadow on. And I think that's why I still gravitate towards these berries and orange colors because I know how to use them. And I have, this is my bougie side, um, are my Natasha Denona palettes. So I have the gold palette, which looks like this. I can get it in frame. It has obviously been loved. 
And then I have the Sunset palette. These are not her largest palettes, but these are the more expensive palettes of hers. These are the $129 palettes. I'm not happy to say I have spent that much on two palettes. I bought those like two years ago as a gift to myself. And I'm happy with those purchases, but there are parts of those palettes that I'm not a fan of. This is her, one of her more recent launches, the Love Palette. I think this came out in like February or March. And this is right up my alley with the right color schemes. Honestly, I haven't used this as much as I thought I would. I prefer this one, which is the Sunrise Palette. I don't know why. I think because that yellow shade's kind of gone everywhere, obviously. Uh, this is a, an eyeshadow palette that I will use almost daily for weekend use. Uh, if I'm not going to work, I typically will do a, a red or a berry tone look. I think you guys can tell that from when I get ready with you guys on the weekends, during my lives. But those are these are the palettes that I use regularly in this drawer. And then this drawer has more eyeshadow stuff in it. Um, over here in this corner are all of my Urban Decay palettes. I Around the time I started getting, getting into makeup was when Urban Decay started to gain their popularity with the Naked palette. In all of these shades, I have in almost a, almost all of these shades, I have in a different palette. I don't use these at all, to be honest. I keep them for nostalgia reasons. Or if I have any family that comes over, like younger girls who want to play in makeup, these are the palettes I let them play with. I haven't had to get rid of, rid of any of them for going bad yet, but I do try to keep an eye on all of my makeup and go through it pretty regularly to make sure there's nothing that has turned or spoiled. This is a holiday palette from Tarte. About three or four years ago, I do not use this at all. This again is another one for uh, any younger girls in the family who want to play with it comes with some face products and stuff like that There was stuff up in this little compartment It's not there anymore um, So that's primarily what those are I have another revolution palette down here. I Didn't like this palette So it kind of got stuck down here. I probably should um Donate it or find find a new home for it. I just haven't had the time. I have one of the Sephora Pro palettes. This is the warm palette when it first came out. Um, as you can tell, I have a color scheme I like to use. This is a Sephora brand gets passed up on quite a bit, but there, that's a really decent palette. Down here are my Stila's. All of the Stila glitters that I have. I don't use these very often anymore. I typically use the Kaja bento boxes as eyeshadow toppers, but I also got some of the um, Tarte, gosh, what are these called? I can't remember. Can I read this? Oh, they're chrome paints. Hannah from um, Smoky Glow always talks about the chrome paint from Tarte that she loves. So last year, I think, was it last year? I don't know. One of the more recent years, they had a little collection of these small ones. Um, and I purchased that and I've only used them a handful of times. I have two little... 
single eyeshadows down here that came in Ipsy bags. Some different colors that I really don't have in my collection if I ever find myself needing or wanting to reach out. I have one single eyeshadow from Urban Decay. This is a Moon Dust in Fool's Gold. This looks like a gorgeous shade, so I haven't been able to get rid of this one. And then I have two Natasha Denona liquid eyeshadows. These came as a duo. Uh, swatch. These are <laughs> so crazy looking. I haven't actually used these on my eyes because they seem a little watery. I'm afraid to use them without testing them first, and I haven't. I haven't thought to test them, honestly. This isn't a drawer I typically open anymore. So that is it for my drawers. Sorry for the cords and stuff. I'm gonna quickly show you guys the top of my vanity. Keep in mind, it is a mess because I was figuring out how to <laughs> film all of this for you. And it might be a little bit shaky. So this is the top of my vanity. Over there, which I'm going to be careful because I have documents on that thing, um, are my micellar waters. I do not typically take my makeup off in here now that I have moved my filming and vanity, but it has been helpful whenever I'm doing my makeup in here to have those to use rather than taking off a full face. Those are the setting sprays that I have. I My favorite one is the Morphe one. I do have the Jeffree Star one because I like strawberries. However, that one does not work very well, so I don't use it. This one is the Too Faced 3-in-1, the pink one back there. I am not a fan of that one either. I typically use the All Nighter, the Morphe, and I really like this Fenty Beauty one. Here are all of the brow products that I have. It's a mixture. I have... You know, the Anastasia Tinted Brow Gel, which is too pigmented for me. I have the Pomade down here, again, too pigmented for somebody who doesn't know how to do their brows. I typically use this Urban Decay Brow Endowed if I'm going to do my brows. Or a very micro fine pencil like this NYX one, which was a recommendation of Raw Beauty Christie. I also have the little pin from Urban Decay. The Urban Decay brow products that came out, what was it, like a year and a half to two years ago are awesome. These are, those are my AirPods. Those are not typically in here. Um, these are the concealers I use. I don't have very many concealers because I don't typically wear concealer that often. But when I do, the one I typically grab is the one that I have purchased and that's the Too Faced Born This Way one. The only other one in here that I have purchased is the NARS in Custard which is a little bit off for my skin tone. It's a little bit too yellow based. These other ones all came in an Ipsy bag. This is a Koki one. It's a little bit watery. A Kat Von D one. It's fine. It's almost like plaster though, so I don't like that one. The Morphe one, actually, I don't mind. And then there's a smaller NYX one that's a little bit, it's a lighter shade, but it's too light. Here's where I have all of my brushes. Um, my eyeshadow brushes, most of those are um, stained. <laughs> my face some of my face and eyeshadow brushes and then my face brushes there. Sponges. These, This one's the e.l.f. sponge. I typically use that for powder. The other one is the Morphe sponge. If I use a sponge for foundation, I have liked that one. And here I have a couple of other beauty blenders at different sizes. And one thing of perfume. This is the Flower Bomb by... Um, Victor and Roloff, is that how you say that? And here are all of the samples of perfume that I will pick out whenever um, you're buying with Sephora and you get to pick free samples. There was a time when I was just selecting perfumes. One, because they didn't have any good 
products to pick, like makeup products. And then two, because I was on the hunt for a very long time for a perfume that I could wear that I enjoyed and didn't spike a migraine, which is what this little section here is. This is the Burberry, my Burberry and blush. Um, it's a pretty girly scent and usually I can't handle those without getting a migraine, but that one I can on almost a daily basis. And then the Victor, the Flower Bomb one is another one that I can wear. I can also wear the Sol de Janeiro and I enjoy that scent um, pretty, like I like the lotion scent so I bought the spray scent because it doesn't irritate my, my migraines. That's where I keep my dirty beauty blenders. This is a fan for once I do my setting spray to make it dry quicker because I'm impatient. That's, <laughs> this is the cord for my battery. This is the button for my ring light. That is, those are two products that I pulled out. And then I have an impressions vanity mirror over there. So guys, that is my makeup collection. I hope you all enjoyed it. If there is anything that you guys saw that you would like a um, more in-depth review on or more in-depth talk about like a particular section like my foundations or my eyeshadows let me know i will be more than happy to film a video of just those sections and actually swatching them and talking to you guys about them otherwise i hope you guys have enjoyed this sorry it's been long until next time i hope you have a good evening day or night wherever you are bye guys